Today I will be talking about scene optimizations and how you can improve your render times and get a better scene interaction. This is part 1 of 3 which I was recently holding at an Autodesk webinar. If you would like to help out this channel and if you haven't done so yet, I would really appreciate if you would subscribe to my channel and support me that way. So now let's get started with stage 1 and optimize your scenes. Alright, so in stage one, I want to talk about scene optimization and this scene is actually fairly complex because it has quite a few different elements to it. As you can see, we do have X Gen Fur, quite a lot of that actually. And we do have these big dots on the back here are raindrops. We do have subsurface scattering all over the place and we have our usual ones like diffuse and specular. And we do have a few area lights at the top and we also have one big dome light which is illuminating the environment. On the left here you can see the render from a client and you can see it's very nice looking. We have nice shallow depth of field, we have all the elements in place, we can see the fur on the on the on the stem here, and we can see all over the nice details of that little ladybug. One problem is that this render takes roughly um, 23 minutes and 41 seconds on my machine. So it does not seem like a high number because in production you do tend to get way higher render times and bear in mind this is a rather simple scene but it just shows how much you can optimize your scenes and the first thing what i always do when i look at scenes or some people tell me oh my renders are so slow what can i do the first thing i do is i look at the samples and specifically i do look at the camera a samples and then the corresponding indirect diffuse and specular passes like transmission and subsurface scattering because all of these combined make up your render time. On top of that, there is now adaptive sampling in Arnold, which if not used properly can really be a bottleneck and really take some time. This is right now enabled and it has a maximum A of 20 and an adaptive threshold of 15. So this essentially is very high render settings and it essentially means that this render will not take 4 AA samples um, for camera A, but it will roughly take 20, which is very expensive and takes a long time. On top of that, you do have ray depth, like diffuse and specular depth. It means um, how often the ray bounces in your scene until it returns the color. And the higher this number goes, the more bounces you will get and the longer your render times will be. So I've seen quite a few different render setups and I've seen quite a few of different um, render times obviously so I've seen people go 10 10 10 10 10 and then diffuse also 10 10 10 and they wonder why the render is super slow and I can tell you it's you are very much oversampling your scenes and you're just not taking um, the power of rendering um, which you can achieve so I want to quickly break down what is very important and how all of this works. Um, so quite importantly, the AA samples here are your main multiplier essentially. So camera AA will be um, multiplied by itself. So in this sense here, it will be four times four samples, um, which equals to 16 already. And then this number will be multiplied with each of its subcomponents as if they are um, quadratic as well. So three times three, this one will be um, nine and the other ones will be nine and this one will be 16. And this one here at the bottom will be 400. So now 16 times 400 will be a very high number. So this is how many samples actually will be calculated if your adaptive threshold is at 0 0.015, which is quite low, um, which means very high render times. So when I get scenes like this, I always first check the AOVs. In this case, um, these AOVs here or this render was rendered very high, so everything will be extremely clean. Um, that's why it took so long to render. So typically what I do before I, um, like how I optimize scenes, I make sure that I output all the AOVs and it's the typical one. So you have your sheen, your specular, your SSS and all the default ones. And importantly, to debug is CPU time and ray count, which are similar, but they give us a bit of different results, which is very interesting to see. And then what I do, I reduce my render settings, even though these are like the client's high settings. What I always do, I go 2111 on everything. I always disable adaptive sampling and I do this. So it's one depth for each of those uh, ray depth. And then I hit render, hit play. Let's see what we get now. 
So this scene did render already. Let's show the buckets, um, show render tiles. And if I update full scene, you will see that we get the scene rendered. It's very quick. It's not 24 minutes, uh, but it is eight seconds. And you can already see that, yes, we do get noise, which is totally fine. And because we have low settings, you can see that the X-Gen fur at the bottom here is a bit noisy. You can see that the SSS here on this little, uh, I, I, I call them antlers, it's probably not the right word. And then you can see we have, because of depth of field, we also have quite a lot of noise. And you can check the AOVs if you scroll down through them. So that CPU time, we'll be discussing that. You've got your Diffuse Direct. You can see that is even noisy. Um, and if Diffuse Direct is noisy, you only can do camera AA samples, increase those. Indirect is very noisy. We don't have Sheen and Specular the same. Specular Direct is pretty noisy. Indirect is even worse. And then you have your scattering passes, and they are all pretty bad. So this already gives me some kind of clue. And if I check the ray count, you will see that if you enable your um, pixel information, you can see how many samples or rays were cast. And essentially, this is now nine rays. The, the brighter it is, the more rays will be passed on onto your renders, which will take essentially longer. That's why I said CPU time is quite similar to um, ray count, because the more rays you produce, the longer it will render. And you can see that um, the CPU time on this specific pixel took, I don't know, four, whatever that unit is, I'm not sure, but you can just gauge or see uh, which took the longest. And that's also a quite good indicator which will um, which shaders or which lights or whatever are very expensive. And you can see our glass or our water droplets on the back are quite heavy and all the subsurface scattering sections are also quite heavy. All right, so the first step, what I always do, I slowly start increasing my samples and because we have that for field you would probably need to raise your AA samples so what I always do I zoom into a region which is very out of focus let's say this one at the back here and you can see the buckets came in and let's just go from camera AA 2 to 4 and see what happens you sometimes need to update your scene for them to actually kick in and you can already see it got a lot better it's still noisy but it is um, getting, getting a lot better here and we still have quite a few of noise in the antlers and still in the specular passes. So next up, what I do, I just um, update my um, subsurface scattering because you can see now that my subsurface scattering passes are still very noisy, these ones here. So I'm cranking those up maybe to three. And hopefully you can see this already got a lot cleaner. And we do the similar thing for, for diffuse and uh, specular because they were also quite noisy. And let's render the bottom section here. And you can see already this is cleaning up quite nicely. We still have the problem of um, very low depth of field. So to get clean depth of field renders, obviously you have two options. You can render this in compositing, or you can increase your AA samples. And for depth of field, you unfortunately need to crank up your camera AA samples. So let's say I go up to, uh, let's say, 8 and see if this gets clean now. You always uh, need to update your full scene. And this is now getting very clean. So what happens now is if your camera A is this high, you will sometimes oversample a few parameters. So what happens if you go on high, if you use high camera A samples, you tend to go lower on the other ones um, because this will now rebalance everything. All right, so now we have a one minute 43 seconds render and it's improved a lot so let's just cycle through the aovs we have our diffuse direct which looks now very clean um, our diffuse interact has a little bit of noise on the white sections here it might be the subsurface scattering then we have specular direct which is pretty good but then we check the specular indirect and we can still see there's quite a lot of noise in here and this is um, because we reduce it back to one so we will definitely need to adjust that back and then sss is very clean on two and the indirect is probably neglectable. So um, all we got to now check is how can we get rid of the noise here at the bottom? So let me just select this region here and do specular of two and see if we can get that cleaner. And if you compare this now with two specular indirect samples, it's getting a lot cleaner now. So what we can do to top everything off is we can enable a denoising operation which is quite cool to do. So you can just head over to Imagers, Add Imager, and then you go for the Denoise Noise Denoiser. 
And what this needs is you will need to restart your render because it, it, it will add custom AOVs for the denoiser to work. And what we can test, we can now actually reduce our camera AA samples down to two and hit render. So now with the denoiser enabled, you can already see that our image is still a lot cleaner and it's now down to 44 seconds for the render. We still have some artifacts here on the depth of field areas, but that's quite easy to clean up. So what I wanna do now is I wanna enable adaptive sampling because we did disable this in the beginning. So if I bring it back now on and my good settings were roughly around eight camera AA samples. So let's just go for safety and put this to 10. So our maximum AA samples will be 10, our minimum will be two, and the adaptive threshold will control which kind of range of samples to use. The lower this number, the more it leans towards 10, and the higher this number, it, it more leans towards two. So I wanna try something like 0 0.005 as pretty good settings. And I still have my denoiser on. And for now, I just wanna render this region here at the back and see how my depth of field behaves. All right, so this depth of field now it looks very clean and we do have denoising on. We have two camera AA samples and we have 10 maximum AA samples. So now let's render the full thing and see what time savings we got. With the added adaptive sampling, our overall image is a lot cleaner just because it finds where to, to add or more samples to clean up the noise. Our final render time is three minutes, 39 seconds, and our original render time was 23 minutes and 41 seconds. So we are roughly eight times faster with these render settings. And the result, there is a little bit of difference because the denoiser also helps to clean it up. But essentially, we have a very clean image and it's a lot faster. Obviously, these settings are very specific to the scene, but I wanted to show you the overall thought process of how to eliminate noise, go through the AOVs, check your render settings and do it step by step. Things to consider are your light samples. Sometimes they are also set to high. And sometimes if your light samples are too low, meaning one, you are sometimes undersampling, which also takes uh, longer to render. So make sure you balance your light samples as well as your AA samples. Last but not least, I really wanna to touch up on the Arnold GPU. It is a very easy way to speed up your interactive render sessions and to optimize your scenes as well. So right now my scene is uh, set up for CPU, but it's very easy to just do the switch. Head over to your render system here and go to the device selection and just change it from CPU to the GPU. You will notice that you will gray out all these parameters. Um, the reason is the GPU works a little bit different than the CPU and you do not have this granu granular control about controls. And that makes it quite easy to control because you just have camera A and you do have adaptive sampling. And obviously you do have still have the ray depth because this is a different setting. So now I switched over to the GPU. Now let's just hit play and see what we get. This is now running on the GPU and you can see it's very fast. And if I switch over to my perspective camera, you will see that if I tum tumble around, we get a pretty fast response time. Um, currently, this um, session is uh, running progressively. So the steps get uh, finer and finer and finer until you get your, your resulting um, AA samples. Typically what you want to do, you want to always work with adaptive sampling on the GPU or you just you definitely need to crank up one setting. So um, you can go really high on the GPU. So if you do camera AA20, this will just slowly progress and get cleaner and cleaner and cleaner. And then just after a few seconds, you get a very clean and resolved image. And this is very nice to work on the GPU. You can also use adaptive samp. How this works is quite similar to on the CPU. You specify your minimum and you specify your maximum and then it's defined by the adaptive threshold. Um, you don't wanna go too low with the minimum AA sample. So what I always do, I go um, down to five for my minimums and then I enable adaptive sampling and then I go pretty high on my maximum camera AA samples. Um, something around 60 to 80 for max is pretty good. The GPU, as I said, works a little bit different, so you need to have different values. You can start off by going on a higher adaptive threshold, maybe 0.25, and then just let's see how that um, works.
And this is now the result after 53 seconds. You can see we still have a little bit of noise, but all you got to do now is reduce the adapter threshold to maybe um, 0 0.05 or something, and then you will get a clean image. And you can also use imagers, denoising, all the fancy stuff can be used on top of that as well. I have now reduced the adaptive threshold to 0 0.05, so now let's see until the image is resolved. Using the denoiser just after a few seconds, uh, we have a very clean and resolved image, and this is the beauty of the GPU. It's, uh, it's very fast if you have a good supported GPU and you get most out of Arnold. This concludes stage one. I hope you learned something and if you did, please let me know in the comments below and I would really appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel and I will see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.